Welcome back to Switzer on Sky News Money. Now, Plato Investment Management is launching a listed investment company that's focused on separating itself among other income products. For more on what's to come for this LIC, I am joined by the company's managing director, Don Hampson. Don, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Peter. Now, now you know that a lot of, particularly my, my viewers, uh, they're income players. You know, yep. they, they like a bit of growth, but they want the reliability of income. Now, Plato Investment Management's gone for something a, a little bit different, hasn't it, in, in search for income. Tell us what that is. Yeah, well, we uh, actively trade stocks mm. to capture income. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's not an overweight bank's play, but we actively rotate through stocks to mm. pick up the income from various uh, companies. Mm. We do so, and our primary target are retirees mm. and pension phase investors and also charities so, mm. um, who fully value the franking credits. Uh, they also don't pay capital gains tax, so mm. they're quite happy for us to actually be a relatively high turnover strategy. Yeah, yeah, and and, and also because they're um, fully franked as well, um, it's a, it's a very attractive little um, strategy. It is. I mean, I think uh, the retiree clients that we have very, uh, you know, they love to get that that refund check from the government on okay. the franking credits. What what's so unique about your investing technique? Well, I, I think if you look at, at the styles, they tend to be in income, and I'd say there's probably three, but the, the first one is quite simple. You overweight banks and overweight Telstra, and mm. mums and dads can do that themselves, and yeah. a lot of portfolios are actually made yeah. up of four banks or a couple of banks and Telstra. Mm. Um, if we did that, there's no point in us trying to market that strategy because mm. people can do it themselves. Probably the, the, the most uh, significant or most followed strategy amongst other institutional investors is, is a buy-right strategy where you own stocks in the market, you mm. capture their dividends, but you also sell call options. Mm over them. So there's quite a few of those around and they're a different style because they capture the income, you get the uh, the call income as well, but it's no such thing as a free lunch. You you are selling some of the upside. So you do in, in, in bull markets limit the capital growth. Mm. Um, on the other hand, say so we're a fully invested long only portfolio, but we're quite active. I mean our turnover is about 150%. We're quite active at uh, capturing dividends from all sorts of stocks in the marketplace, but also we're sector neutral. So we're not overweight banks, we're not overweight sort of mm. high, in, high yield stocks, mm. but um, we're just there when the money's there. So when the dividends, uh, you know, in the come dividend period, and then we can move on and buy other stocks. So, so when you use a term like 150%, explain that to my viewers. Right, so um, that's uh, like either a buy side or sell side. So we will actually sell about 150% of the value of the portfolio over an annual period. Mm. Um, or and that, that's a, an indication of how active uh, a trader of key dividend paying stocks you Yes, are. yeah. And, you know, we're unashamedly an active manager and that's a, that is an indication of how active we are. I mean, many managers only have 30 or 40% turnover. Mm. Um, and, and this is where I think is one of the differences. A lot of uh, fund managers and even the, uh, the index players will say to be tax effective you need to have a low turnover, that mm. you don't want to realise capital gains and you don't want to turn your portfolio over. Mm. And, and that is correct if you're your clientele are <coughs> taxpayers and particularly yeah. high-end taxpayers yeah. because you don't want to pay short-term capital gains tax no, of course. You, and you actually don't want to pay long-term capital gains tax uh, mm. at least you know, you'd rather prolong the payment as long as possible if you're on the highest marginal mm. tax rate. But if you're actually inside a pension fund or you're a mum and dad with a couple of hundred thousand dollars and your uh, earnings on that investment, so you're retired and your earnings on those investments are below the tax-free free threshold, mm. um, you don't pay capital gains tax, you don't pay any tax and indeed you get a refund of franking credits. And mm. So we're actually actively targeting and in fact we'd say we tailored our portfolio for those investors. So, so why Plato? What was Plato a prodigious stock market investor in ancient uh, Greece? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but he was certainly a, a wise man, a philosopher, and, and indeed dabbled in uh, mathematics as well. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's a fairly simple name as well. If you can, you know, a lot of fund managers are named after uh, Greek or Roman gods or, yeah. or what have you, but many of them are quite difficult to spell or pronounce. <laughs> so, uh, you know, someone who's wise and... Uh, also, uh, one of, one of uh, Plato's uh, uh, alleged quotes is that his, folk, his, his view was that if you just, you know, if men just specialised or women specialised in what they do best, mm. um, the world would be a better place because, we, you know, we do what we do best. We don't, we're not trying to be all things for all people. Mm. And I think it, it flows through into this fund. We're not trying to manage this fund for all sorts of clients, every client in Australia. Mm. We're actually targeting 
uh, the pensioner, mm. the retirees and those, the self-managed super funds that are retired. Mm. Um, and not many fund managers actually do that. And so mm. we, we're in a bit of a niche play there. Well, fortunately, it was Aristotle who said nothing to excess because you are going <laughs> excess when it comes to income players. Uh, well, I wouldn't say excess. I mean, we think we've got a reasonable uh, amount of income. We generate about 9% since inception per yeah. annum. Yeah. Um, you know, there are some funds that generate even higher income than that, but they have a lot more higher turnover than us. And yeah. I think they're, they're also, you know, we also focus on capital gains. We think it's important to look at the total return of your portfolio, not just the income. And that's the point that you, you've made to me in the past, is that it's not just the income. You actually do perform pretty well in the capital gain stakes. Why is that? Well, for a start, we're a long-only manager, mm. so we're fully invested. Yeah. Second, we're not, we're not capping our upside by selling the call options. Mm. But the most important thing is every time we buy a stock, we buy a stock uh, to ensure... OK, we get some good income off it if, we, if we're buying for income, but also that we expect the total return over our holding period to be positive. Mm. Or indeed, we expect it to, to outperform the market. OK, so that's what you do. What is the external setting looking like for you? Like, what, what, what do you think the market, the overall stock market's going to do over the next year? Are, are, you, are you comfortable with the, where the market's heading? I think the market's rallied pretty strongly on uh, the back of the, the Trump bump, yeah. you know, the lower, lower corporate taxes in the US and, you know, speculation about um, infrastructure spending, etc. And I think, to be honest, it's probably almost got ahead of itself mm. because that infrastructure spending is going to take years and years. We know that you don't build a road or a bridge or an airport overnight, so it's going to take many, many years just to get the approvals rather than to see the actual building. Mm. Um, the tax cuts in the US hopefully will come through pretty soon, mm. but that's... You know, it's not going to affect... It'll affect some of the Australian market, like CSL, some of the stocks making out of the US, but the bulk of the market, they don't pay US tax, it's not going to be a thing. So I think global markets in the Australian market are, are probably factored in all the good news, and to me that suggests that we might travel sideways for the rest of the year. OK, mate. Don Hampson from Plato Investment Management.